Hello and welcome to the Ladies European Tour, which this week heads to North Africa and to Rabat in Morocco for the 27th running of the La La Merriam Cup. Once again, the past 73, Royal Golf Dar Es Salaam plays host in what is a unique event on the calendar, with the Men's Champion Tour also teeing it up at the same venue. The women are on the blue course, a Robert Trent Jones designed with tree-lined fairways there to catch out any wayward shots. No doubt her local eyes were on history maker Ines Lachlalesh. The Moroccan became the first ever female Arabic winner on a major tour. Pauline Roussan, one of those out to stop her. The French woman, a former world amateur number one after her third LET title. Maria Fassi flew over from last week's event in Saudi. The Mexican spends most of her time on the LPGA Tour and is yet to live up to her promise. Can the big hitter deliver in Morocco? But with 35 tour winners in the draw, including Dick Shadaga and previous winner here, Clara Davidson Spilkova, it would be a hard call to see who could get their hands on the trophy. The wind remained low on day one, and with temperatures in their low 20s, there were some good scores to be had. Dick Shadaga, though, got off to an up and down start. Plenty of good golf, nailing a birdie here at the eighth but mixed in with plenty of mistakes. In the end, six birdies, two bogeys, and a double bogey left her two under par on the par 73. That's the same score as Pauline Roussan. A lovely touch here at the same hole to set up a birdie of her own, but like Dagger, three bogeys damaged the scorecard. 23-year-old teeing it up in Morocco for the first time, just short of a year since that wonderful win in Singapore. In contrast, Marta Martin was in the country in December, regaining her card at Q School. The Spaniard clearly enjoys the Moroccan greens. She briefly held the lead at four under, but a bogey at the last put her back in the clubhouse with a round of 70 and in fourth spot. Fellow Spaniard Teresa Toscano is another who earned her playing rights at Tour School, and she ended the day alone in third. Six birdies and two bogeys, she was four under. To the delight of the home fans, Ines Lechlalesh put down a day one marker in front of friends and family. Out in 34 and back in 34, she was peppering the flags and even drawing applause from her playing partners. It wasn't just her irons that were shining, the flat stick also working well. Lechlalesh says it would be a dream to win a home event, with an opening day 68 a very decent start and more than deserving of the low high five. The Moroccan was playing with Maria Fassi. The Mexican, an invite, showed that her game is not all about power. This, a great recovery from under the trees at the fifth, using the contours of the green to perfection. The 25-year-old was simply unstoppable. Without a bogey on the card all day, she fired eight unanswered birdies. This would set up the last of those at the eighth one of five on what was her back nine. She would close eight under and open up a three-shot lead. The Mexican, one of just two players to put together a bogey-free round. After starting work with a new coach in the off-season, Fassi credits her success to a new approach to the game. You know, I did a 180 this off-season with everything that I, I kind of had been doing and um, just kind of went back to how I was playing when I was in college and um, I had played two tournaments and I hadn't seen the results that, that I wanted and um, I think today's round just kind of shows that uh, it's there that, that all the work that, that I put in the last uh, five months um, is, is paying off and, and I'm just proud um, you know that I, I kept myself in it. Day two and in a 54-hole tournament, the chasing pack needed to make a move on a day of contrasting weather. And a moment to remember at the 17th for amateur Sophia Sharif Esakali. Starting the day four over, the 14-year-old Moroccan carded a 72 to make the cut for the second year running. Clara Davidson Spilkova knows what it takes to win in Morocco, claiming her first LET victory in this tournament back in 2017. After an opening day 72, the Czech gave herself an outside chance of a repeat result with a Friday round of three under. Spilkova in a tie for fourth, the same position as Dick Shadaga. The Indian matched her opening day 71 with another 71. 
The lefty who finished third on the rankings last season with plenty of great work on the greens. At four under par, the Indian well placed, but a fair distance from the lead. The joint best round of the day came from Sara Kuskova. The Czech fired a brilliant third day 66 en route to her top 20 finish in Kenya, and she was at it again here in Morocco. A 67 to shoot Kuskova up the leaderboard, another sharing four at four under. But it was a frustrating Friday for Lachlalesh. This a prime example of a day where the putts didn't quite drop. The Moroccan mixing two birdies and two bogeys. She ended where she started, five under. Pauline Roussan moved right into the mix. She recovered after double bogeying the first by carding eight birdies in a blistering round of 67. Now eight under overall and into second for the French player. Out came the fist bumps. But out ahead remained Maria Fassi. Like Roussan, she picked up an early double bogey but recovered in style. Fassi was in a share of the lead in Dubai in 2021, heading into the final day before missing out. And a birdie at the last put the Mexican four clear, very much in the driving seat for a first win on a major tour. A big lead then heading into the final round for Fassi, but a closest challenger looking to win on tour for the third successive year. So Roussan knows what it takes. I'm giving myself a little bit of time to just be able to see where my game is at, especially after such a long off season, because I didn't play for six weeks. I need to take some time off golf before I started hating it. So <laughs> now I, I, I do love it. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's just uh, one tournament at a time and then I'll see in a couple of weeks and then, you know, just do a, a big summary of everything and just, you know, keep working and, and improve what needs to be improved. I haven't been in this position in, in a very long time, um, so I'm very happy. Uh, to, to be to be here, you know, I I kept walking past the leaderboards and, and seeing my name at the top. Uh, you know, I kept joking with my caddy. I'm like, you know, I, I could get used to this. I like it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think it, it adds a little bit of pressure. But but like I said, I mean, I've I've been working so hard uh, that just to see to see you know two very good rounds uh, put together and. Uh, a lot of birdies and just playing very smart and, and having a lot of fun and enjoying uh, even this morning that it might have not been as enjoyable but uh, yeah just overall extremely happy with with where I'm at and um, very excited for tomorrow. Stay with us to see if Massey could close it out for her first win on tour or if Roussan or anyone else could reel her in. We'll see you after the break. Hello and welcome back to Morocco for the final round of the La La Merriam Cup at the Par 73 Royal Golf Dar es Salaam in Rabat, where Pauline Roussan has impressed, climbing into second place after a day 267 put her eight under. But still four shots behind leader Maria Fassi. Ahead since the opening day, the Mexican stands on the brink of her first win on a major tour. A reminder then of how things stand, Fassi in a dominant position, the chasing pack would have to hope nerves get the better of the 25-year-old and produce something a little special if they were to deny the big hitter a breakthrough win. The weather was near perfect on the final day, ideal golfing conditions. Bronte Law, one of those who needed something remarkable if she was to challenge. A birdie here taking her to six under, but still a little off the pace. Similar story for Fatima fernandez Cano, something spectacular needed and delivered. How about this at the fifth? A moment to remember for the Spaniard, an eagle. Pauline Roussan was making up some ground, a birdie and a bogey from the French woman early on, but this third at the fifth set up a near tapping birdie. She would move 100 for the day. But playing partner Maria Fassi was keeping her nose ahead. A bogey at the second, she moved back level for the day at the same hole. A lead though, down from four shots to three. 
after Fernandez Cano's spectacular shot at five, she kept the good golf coming. A birdie at the seventh, another at eight. Bogey free, the young Spaniard up to eight under. Bronte Law still a fair distance off the lead. She was getting closer with her third birdie of the day here at the seventh and adding another at eight to go to seven under overall. Pranavi Erst very much in contention, but she'd have to set new records. The Indian on her way though, out in a six under 31 front nine with an eagle at the eighth. She wasn't done there. Birdie number five at the 11th, taking her to nine under, seven under for the day, a big Saturday move. Erst now in a tie for second with Pauline Roussan, but Fassi still looking in command. I'm Richard Kaufman, joined by Ladies European Tour winner Megan McLaren, who was in the field this week, and we start at the par 5 8, a reachable par 5. Moved the tee forward here in the last round, so I think pretty much every player in the field should be able to get there in two if they hit the fairway. Maybe not at all as close as that, though, Megan. No, take that, wouldn't you? Eagle chance there. Trying to put some pressure on. Seems to be enjoying herself. Now for Fassi, this is, never mind a short par five, it feels like a short par four. Especially with that front pin. She's probably got short iron in there. Birded all the par fives in that day 165. Today one birdie, one bogey on the, the five par fives here, par 73. It's a lovely looking course, isn't it? It's honestly, it's been one of my favorite places to come to since my first year on tour. Now here's the Indian who's charging seven under for the day after 11 holes. Good effort there. Nice little uh, front pin for her to really fancy that chip, I reckon. Yeah, came 13th in Morocco at qualifying school. Now, talking Morocco, here's their number one player. Yeah, playing nicely, just the one birdie so far for Lachlalesh. It should be a bit disappointed with that chip there, but still a chance. Now here's one of your former Curtis Cup winning teammates, Bronte Law at nine. Yeah, it's good to see her challenging up near the top of the leaderboards again. She's obviously been through some tough times recently. Yeah, that's a pretty nice touch. Hopefully knock that in, go out in three under. Her only birdie so far, like Lalish, was a, a two-putt birdie at the second. Yeah. Tell their fans enjoyed that one. Nice to pick up a bit, little bit of momentum there. Yeah, friends and family out there. So she's seven under. Still five back, though. Yeah, lost her LPGA tour rights last year, so she's going to focus on the LET. Yeah, it'll be good to see her back out here and see if she can kind of rebuild her career a little bit. Now, Fassi, this would be a real marker. Massive. First eagle of the week. Now, what a time to do that. That is really get her back on track in this round. And that really is disheartening for the chasing pack. She's five shots ahead of third place again. There's a taps in for only a par. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lot of birdies before that, but... This to match the eagle now of Fassi. That takes a lot of guts to do that after Fassi's just told one before her. And well, a couple of eagles, Lachlalish with a fabulous birdie of her own. Now back nine starting for Bronte Law, seven back as it stands now. That's not an easy pin position there, but you can see Bronte's really dialed in today. This is the uh, third event of the season for a tournament that dates back to 1993, but the 12th time on the LET schedule. Roussan now at nine. Making that pin position look easy as well. It doesn't take missing by much to be in the water from left there. In a good position. He really should have got a swing at this. Is there a way through? That didn't sound like it came up. I'm deaf. I'm deaf. 
An awkward spot that seems to be sitting okay. We've had some great winners of this event over the years, major champions like Laura Davies and Ari Jatanagam, European number ones like Charlie Hull and Gladys Nasera. Yes, it's always been one of those tournaments for me that's just an enjoyable week to be a part of. They really look after us here. Nice judgment of pace that from her. So Fassi tries again at nine. That's really good touch there because there's a lot of hops and hollows on that green. So to give us a chance to try and is really important. Yeah, it'd been a bit rugged until that point, but one great shot. Looks like she might escape with par. This to start with a birdie on the back nine for Law. Yeah, I tell you what, I know Bronte's a long way back, but I don't think it'll take much more for her to start thinking she might have a chance here. Yeah, six back as it stands. Now, remember, she shot that final day 64 with that win in Singapore just under a year ago, and that's an excellent front nine. Just what she needed. Now just two shots back. It's impressive that Pauline's staying with Fassi after that eagle on eight as well. Her little brother came out to surprise her last night. Franco has arrived in Morocco. Out in one under for the day, still the one to catch. Heading to the back nine in Morocco. And she has since Thursday morning. It's Maria Fassi leading the Lala Merriam Cup. But her advantage is now just two shots. Hello and welcome back to Morocco and the final round of the Lala Merriam Cup at Royal Golf Dart at Salam. Where Bronte Law kept the birdies coming. A brilliant approach here at 11 to move to 9 under, but still some five shots behind leader Fassi. Law now in a share of third place with Fatima Fernandez Cano and Pranavi Urs. Fassi led by four overnight, that's now down to two over Pauline Roussan. In the trees off the tee at this par five. So third shot now for Fassi. Making hard work of the par five there. It's a better position to be in it too. Yeah, it should just be a little pitch in here for Pauline. couple of ridges on that green so that's probably further away than she would have wanted well dialed in at 10 dialed in at 11 up to Bronte Law now at 12 I take it you've seen her in this kind of mood before <laughs> so I've seen this version of Bronte a number of times over the years and one thing you'll say for her is she will not back off when she's feeling it well, she birded this hole the first two days, Fassi, but now playing her fourth here at this par five. It's all getting a bit messy. It is, and having it happen on a par five, I think, is quite draining because you obviously expect to be making birdies there. Four birdies in five holes. Well, she won't be aware Fassi's in a bit of trouble, but maybe a chance now for Bronte Law. It's not dead either, is it, really? Just a little too firm with that one. Now, Pranavi Urs. You played with her, haven't you, Megan? Yeah, I played with her when she was still an amateur, I think, in India. Um, and you could tell she's a very confident player and I don't think we'll be afraid of being up there near the top of the leaderboard. Fancy has been at the very top all week. Struggling with this par five. That's going to be two sixes on par fives. 
today if she knocks that in. Yeah, and I know she, she made her eagle on eight, but for her, obviously, making sixes on par fives is almost like doubles. Worth pointing out, there are two spots to be had at the Aramco Team Series Tampa for being the leading players in the top ten, not it exempt. So, Prinavius very much in the running for one of those. Yeah, that would be big for her if she could get in there. into that Massey Lee that she lost all her spark after that win in Singapore and her brain was fried at the end of the year but the club's down for six weeks that's what you need sometimes okay still sit in front I suppose somehow you got to think that way absolutely she probably doesn't know what Bronte's doing a few groups ahead of her Five pars in a row now for us. Up to 12. This fairway there, so it's going to be a trickier approach shot than it should be. <coughs> That's not miles right. Was that a shank? It's another one that didn't sound like it was off the middle of the club face. She doesn't look very amused by it. Well, it has come down in play, but more problems for Fassi. Now, Lachlalesh just hasn't been able to make enough birdies today, but playing really nicely. She's another player that's good to see doing well here, because she's obviously had, had a bit of a tough time over in the States over the last year since she won. That's very, very Bronte reaction there. She expects to hold everything once she's uh, on a run like this. Well, that was the start of the back nine with four straight birdies. Roussan well, will be very aware of the leader's troubles. Quite a tough little pin here on 12 because there's a ridge just to the left of the pin, but it looks like that's going to stay on the right level there. Meanwhile, Maria Fassi is trying to get back on the fairway here, right up against the tree. Well, it's out. Not on the fairway, but it's out at least. She's there in three. I mean, this is a real wobble now. Yeah, she's definitely rattled by everything that's going on. Now here's uh, a winner on the Epson Tour in 2022, like a certain Megan McLaren, Fatima Fernandez Cano. Yeah, that was a great year she had out on the Epson Tour that year. She really looked very dominant, like she was going to go on to big things. Yeah, just come back from surgery on her arm just a couple of months before Q School, clicking the fingers, a little heavy handy handed from Urse. Look at it go. Yeah, she did the hard part there, getting the tee shot on the green, so it's quite a long par three, but she won't be happy with that putt. Shot number four now at this par four for Fassi. I think it's always tough when you're in a situation like that, when you're leading and things start to unravel, because you just feel like you don't have any control anymore. That's a pity. First bogey of the day for Pranavia. She'll slip back to eight under. So it's now Pauline Roussan in front, thanks to a par at 12. Maria Fassi did make double bogey, set out of the lead for the first time since going top Thursday with Law and Fernandez Cano within two. Here we are at the 13th. It's changed big time. It has, and Pauline will know that obviously Fassi's rattled and she'll try and take advantage of that. 171 yards to a back left flag. Ooh. That's a good shot in there because that's a dangerous pin position. You can see if you're just a little bit too aggressive, it's easy to miss it left. Well, the nurse going through the head of Maria Fassi right now. She'll just be hoping to hit this on the green at this point, I think. Thank you. 
not the best place to miss. It's tough up and down from there. It is just the bogey at the par 370. Tough hole this. Yeah, it could force some drama late on, I would guess, because it is it is one where if you make a par, you feel like you're probably moving in the right direction. Now Bronte Law, middle of the fairway, 14th, uphill second. That is one of the most Bronte things that I've seen, I think. She uh, doesn't shy away from the spotlight, that's for sure. And that could really take her to the front of this tournament. Well, she is now tied for the lead. Remember, she was seven shots adrift heading into the back nine. Now joint leader, 93 yards with a 54 degree wedge. Incredible. Meanwhile, Fassi. Oh. That's more like it. It is, but the difference in how these two rounds are going for Fassi and Laura is really quite extreme. You know who you'd want to be playing the last few holes. Well, Fernandez Cannon's just birded 14 and 15. <laughs> She's suddenly just won back. Another chance there as well, but she probably doesn't know how close she is to the lead. Heard those cheers in the adjacent fairway. Not to be. So she is now tied at the top with surprisingly Bronte Law. It's amazing how quickly things can change in the final round. Just short in two at the par five. Another wedge in for Bronte Law. No surprise to see that close. She's really taken charge of this here. Yeah, she won Q School in Morocco. I think she made eight birdies in a row when she won a couple of years back. Fassi is hopefully will steady things a little. Yeah, yeah that's a really good up and down from there. Hopefully, like you said, settle her nerves a little bit, but it's Bronte that she's got a catch now. Yeah, Law has another birdie look to come. This at 15 for the outright lead. <laughs> Eight under par for the last ten holes. It's an incredible round, and it really is. This is the Bronte of my amateur days for sure, where she just she doesn't back down from anything. This for Fatima Fernandez Cano to get within one. Based in uh, Alabama, finished fourth at the Spanish Open in 2021. The three players ahead of her at that event were. A lot of Siganda, Maya Stark and Atai Titikun. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more of her this season. Uphill, short par four, one behind Bronte Law, but we know what Bronte did from this position. Yeah. Only a short pitch in here, so she'll be hoping to hit it close. Ooh. It's average next to Bronte's, doesn't it? I mean, it's, it's got to be a shock to the system, though, though, for Maria Fassi. It is. Like I said, when you're in that position and you're leading and things have been going so well for two days, you don't expect it to unravel, and that's what makes it hard to handle. Yeah, now it's got a pretty close in it, this short par four, so it'll be an ideal time to make a birdie. And Bronte Law has missed the fairway here at 16. She's quite lucky to end up with a shot there because that could have gone anywhere if she's hit it left off the tee. It's found the bunker. So birdie chances to come at 14. You know, it's a couple in a row that Pauline will be a little bit disappointed with having given herself some, some decent looks at birdie. We saw Danielle Kang and Lydia Ko last year to win that Aramco Team Series event in Singapore. Now this would make things feel so much better. Yeah, especially with the par five coming up. She could really, really do with a little bit of positive momentum. Not to be. We always talk about her talent mentioned in the same breath as Jennifer Cupcho because of their duel in that first Augusta National Women's Amateur. 
Pauline Roussan was actually third in that event as well. That's a pretty good, pretty good trio there. Really good shot there from Bronte. So I would not be surprised to see her knock that in and who knows what she'll do over the last two holes. Roussan in amongst the trees at the par 5, 15. It's easy to just get a little bit too aggressive off the tee on 15 and there'll be a lot of people in those left trees. Yeah, she wasn't alone there, Maria Fassi as well. It's still with the back nine, hasn't it, really? It doesn't look like she got herself too far forward there either, so it's another par five that she's making hard work. To the leader. Oh, that's a pity. A second bogey of this extraordinary round. Back to 12 under alongside Roussan in the lead. And remember Fatima Fernandez Cano now only one back. It shows there are some tricky holes coming in. So even if you've been making a lot of birdies, there's a couple that could test you. Third shot now. He did manage to find the fairway. <laughs> that pin position is so, so dangerous. You've just seen with Fassi's shot there, anything, it looks like it's at the pin and all of a sudden you've missed it right. In. That is not easy from there. Yeah, that's a no-go zone, really. Sam. Try and knock this one if you can, just left of the flag. She's maybe just been a little bit cautious there, maybe seeing what happens to Fassies, and that's going to be a really tricky putt from where she is as well. And there's Cano then, just one back. This is the tough par 3, 17th. finished second on the Epson Tour <laughs> rankings in 2020 and 2021. There's a lot of options with this shot. I'd be interested to see what, what Fassi chooses to do here, but it's almost like you've got to play it as a long putt. Oh no, oh no, 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 that's coming back to her feet. Oh, it's unraveling big time for the Mexican. Such a long-time leader of this event. Can't believe it. I think she's just trying to gather herself a little bit. She doesn't quite know how to stop what's going on. So fifth shot now on this part five. I'm really surprised she chose to play that shot the same way. You've got to be so delicate with it. Somehow Pauline Roussin has to ignore everything that's going on around her and try and focus on the job at hand. over the place it's difficult for Pauline to keep her focus Just remember she is tied for the lead again after uh, Monty Law's drop shot at 16 Fassi tries again thank goodness for that oh, still that's going to be a double then is it Which, yeah I mean the shots that she's dropped on par fives today alone that's the last thing you would have expected from this round a second double bogey in four holes leading by four at the start of the day now she is three shots behind and it's slipping through her fingers. Cano to stay within one. That hole seems to be catching a few people out. It's definitely probably the toughest hole coming in just because it's a long iron into, a, uh, into that par three. Drop shot for Fatima Fernandez Cano. 
Hopefully, another par. Yeah, all pars on the back nine still for Pauline Roussan. But what an incredible back nine this is turning out to be. Full of drama in the Lala Merriam Cup. It's left Fassi's titles hopes in tatters. And Bronte Law and Pauline Roussan in a share of the lead. Welcome back to the closing stages of the Lala Merriam Cup in Morocco, where it's been a dramatic back nine that's left Pauline Roussan and Bronte Law tied at the top. This is at the 16th, Pauline Roussan. Tricky little hole, this. It is. I mean, she's done the most difficult part, which is hitting the fairway, so she shouldn't have too long of an approach shot in there. This is the hole which Bronte Law bogeyed. Well, after the problems at the last, Fassi did find the fairway at least here. Well, polite applause, but the body language said a lot. Now off to this 17th, 188 yards up the hill. Yeah, tough, tough hole at the end of this round. I think if you hit it inside 25, 20 feet, you'd be delighted with it. Well, a bit like that. I'm going to say, this is Bronte that we're talking about, so any birdie chance, I think she'll be eyeing right up. Yeah, fabulous shot from her. Now, found the fairway bunker off the tee, Fatima Fernandez Cano, so had to, to lay up with her second, so third in now for the Spaniard. She'll be a little disappointed not to give herself a birdie chance on the last, but still a great week. Roussan with this opportunity to edge ahead again. Yeah, par on 16 isn't bad, but obviously the position she's in, she wants to be the one to take the initiative. Yeah, par at 16 is not a bad score. Par at 17 as well is a good score. This... A right to left up for Bronte Law. Oh, what a two that is. It's just the fourth birdie at this hole all day. And it would be Bronte that makes it. Like we said, she, she loves, the, loves the spotlight and loves to be the one to take the stage in a situation like this. Okay, cosy down there from Fassi. Nine birdies and an eagle in this final round from Bronte Law. Yeah, it's not not the first time she's had a um, a stunning final round to, you know, to maybe win a tournament or to come close to winning a tournament. I think she did it in Dubai a few years ago. Yeah, where that lady was in a share of the league going into the final round. Deja vu. Well, I wonder if she heard the cheers at 17. One back again now, Roussan. Will this to match the 67 of Pranavier's? <coughs> well, not to be, but I mean, given where she was back in October needing surgery to have a chance of winning first few events back it's been a, a wonderful day and a wonderful week really for Fatima Fernandez Cano yeah and she's clearly a, a class player you know what I saw on Epson that year I wouldn't be surprised to see her contending a lot this year yeah a couple of 68s to finish this week for Fernandez Cano More trouble for Fassi. Just emphasises again how good that birdie was from Bronte on that hole. That's her brother, Franco. He's a, he's a DJ, younger brother. 
came out surprised. He hasn't quite turned into the day he was probably hoping for. Here's the main challenger now to Brontidor. It's not the worst place to miss that green just short, but it's obviously not what she needs at this point. Terrific tee shot from Bronte Law. 158 yards left down the hill. She's just honestly making that look so easy because both the tee shot and the approach shot there, there's trouble both sides and she's come up trumps again. Yeah, everything looks easy for Bronte Law. It was like Maria Fassi on day one. Very different feeling today, though, for the Mexican. That's come up shy. Well, if this was to go in, you could all but guarantee the win. That was for a 10 under 63. Like I said, she's she's just not one to back off. And I think once she gets victory in her sights, she knows that she's capable of getting it done. Looks like she's taking the uh, putter out here. Seen a few people find it difficult to judge the pace coming down to that pin. I mean, it's not, not a bad shot there, but got work cut out to catch Bronte now. Well, this to put the final pieces of a scintillating round of golf. What a performance. That's utter brilliance from Bronte. It's a long season, but that has to be a contender for round of the year. A 64. She'll just have to wait and see if it's enough. There's some people who just have that competitiveness that mean when they're in that situation, they... You know, that's where they want to be, and Bronte's one of them. Well, it's all been a bit of a nightmare on this back nine for Fassi. Yeah, it'll be a tough day for her to take, but hopefully, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but she'll learn from it, and obviously putting herself in that position, getting closer to getting that first win. Well, this is crucial. One behind Bronte Law. Has to make it. Well, that means she now needs to make eagle down 18, which is very unlikely, naturally. What a day for Bronte, though. I mean, Pauline's not done too much wrong, but somebody else goes out and shoots nine under par. Yeah, well, Bronte Law... I think she's aware of the situation over at 17 and knows it's pretty much job done. This has to go in. Well, I'm pretty sure she can't even get to the green from here. Just be chipping down. Yeah, quite right, Megan. Well, that's it. That is confirmation now with that that Bronte Law is the La La Merriam Cup champion. Olivia Cowan, amongst others, there to join in already on the celebrations. We'd never seen that coming heading into the back nine. No, she was, what, seven back, I think, going into the back nine? I mean, that's things like that don't happen, but Bronte's made it happen. Well, played a third onto the green, and that was for par for Roussan. Incredible. I know. Incredible feeling. For a closing birdie for Maria Fassi. <laughs> we you know it, eh? Both messes with your head, that's for sure. It's, uh, at least she has something positive to take from the day there. And the first birdie of the back nine, but back in 41 for a last day 76. Tied third at nine under par for Maria Fassi. <laughs> And it'll be a bogey, bogey finish for a 71 for Pauline Roussan, but it doesn't change her finishing an outright second. But after all those frustrations in 2023, how good must this feel? Yeah, it's yeah there's, there's not much better as a golfer to, to go through the hard times and then to get back on top again. It, it feels a lot sweeter when you've been through the, through the difficult times. 
Got a three shot victory in the end for Bronte Law. Her 64, the best round of the week. A bogey free 70 from Sara Kuskova. Left her alone in sixth. Lach Lalish tied for seventh in the end. Annabelle Fuller and Teresa Toscano amongst the rookies in the top 20. That also includes the 2017 champion, Clara Davidson Spilkova. A brilliant third LET trophy for Bronte Law, the Lala Merriam Cup champion. Um, it's funny, the last time I was in Morocco, I, I won Q School, and you know, now being back again, I think now it might be my favourite place to come. <laughs> I talked to my caddy Gary and saying, you know, all it takes is one hole out an eagle and you know you get those two extra sh you know shots up the field it puts the pressure on the leaders and you know a couple of holes later I find myself doing that so you know maybe something was in the air Shannon Tan ended in 37th here in Morocco she just about hangs on to top spot in the order of merit above a charging law a bit more of a commanding lead in the rookie of the year race though more than twice the amount of points as second place Natalia Guseva. Two Americans and a European round out the top three of the Rolex World Rankings. It'll be an intriguing Solheim Cup in Gainesville, Virginia in September. Monty Law perhaps back in the mix after her win here. Well, thanks for watching as Bronte Law produced a final day performance that will live long in the memory. The English woman with the round of her life. Next up, we head to Tampa in Florida for the Aramco Team Series. As ever, keep in touch with all the action at ladieseuropeantour.com. Until then, bye-bye for now.